If you're a beginner in Excel VBA, the best way to take your programming to the next level is to learn to use loops. Yes, loops are the most powerful thing in Excel VBA and probably in computer coding more generally, but we can't just jump into Excel and start doing loops. That would be a bit like learn to drive in a Formula One car very quickly, your career out of control and probably crash. Rather, we've got to go through the basics that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to take you through the concept of a loop and then we're going to jump into the Excel VBA editor and we're going to start using loops in Excel VBA. All of that in the next 10 minutes or so. Welcome back to the Excel VBA beginner building block series. There is a PDF file that accompanies this series. The link is in the video description below. It's got summaries of all the videos, the 18 building blocks and the details of three secret videos that are not available on YouTube. So go ahead and download that. Right, let's get into this one. So the concept, the concept of a loop, a loop is the ability to repeat an instruction any number of times, repeat an instruction any number of times. Let me quickly show you what I mean on my desk here. I've got my battery recycling box. Yes, as a content creator, we use lots of batteries. I keep them all for recycling in this biscuit tin. So suppose I wanted you to help me. I wanted you to write used on this battery so that I know that it's used and I don't try to use it again, thinking that it's not used as happens all the time. And suppose I said to you, I want that doing for all the batteries in the biscuit tin. I said, do it for battery one, do it for battery two, do it for battery three, do it for battery four, until I got through all of the batteries in the biscuit tin, all 25 batteries. That would be a bit silly, wouldn't it? Probably by the time I got to battery five, you'll say, but Chris, Chris, hang on. I think you want me to write used on all the batteries in the biscuit tin. <laughs> We have just unlocked the language that's going to allow us to use loops in Excel VBA for each object in a collection, for each battery in the biscuit tin. We want to do something. Yes, and this is our foundational concept to access loops. So let's get into the Excel VBA editor and armed with that knowledge, let's try to create a loop in Excel VBA. So let's say sub loop test. Um, specifically, what I want to do is this kind of thing. I want to make a list of all of the worksheet names in the file. Maybe we won't be able to make a list, but at least I want to display all of the worksheet names in the file. How would we go about doing that for each object in a collection? There's one more thing we need here. Remember in the previous video, we spoke about variables. Variables have another important role. They help us to get a for each loop working. In this case, we're working with worksheets. So we're going to say dim Chris sheet. That's the informative name I'm giving to the variable as worksheet. So you can go ahead and do this, work along with me. The download link is in the video description below. So we've created our variable. Now we've got to get into our foundational concept. We're going to say for each Chris sheet. So there's our for each and there's our variable name in we're just going to say worksheets and for completeness not sure if this apps is absolutely necessary we're going to say active workbook dot worksheets and then we're going to close the loop here we're going to say next chris sheet and that really is the main syntax but let's just take a second to remember our foundational concept for each battery in the biscuit tin but in this case We've said for each Chris sheet, so we're not talking about batteries, we're talking about worksheets in Excel. Then rather than the biscuit tin, we have this worksheets collection. Yes, this is how Excel really understands and builds Excel in the background, objects and collections. In this case, the object is the worksheet. They're organized into the worksheets collection. We also have cells. Uh, that we can organize into collections. The workbooks are organized into a collection. The charts and the buttons and the shapes on the sheet are organized into collections. So we have objects organized into collections. If we can understand that, we can harness that idea using for each object in a collection to get things working. So have you managed to crack this syntax? Let's give it a go as usual using message box to help us test. So if I now use the Chris sheet variable name, the last piece of information we need here is a property. 
just like with the battery, I was writing used on the battery. I was giving it some kind of attribute. Objects in Excel have properties. They're things about the object we might want to manipulate. For example, the value in the cell, and in this case, the name of a worksheet. So that's all it is, a loop. But this loop could run any number of times. Let's go through it step by step now. Have we got any errors? Very common to get errors in loops. So I would go through it using the F8 key on the Windows PC or go debug and step into. That's going to avoid the situation where you have an interminable loop. If that does happen, hold down the escape key on the Windows PC. Hold down the escape key. That should allow you to get out of the loop. So I'm going to hit the F8 key now. What's going to happen now? Chris Sheets name. So sheet one has popped up in the message box. Why is that? Well, sheet one is the name of the first sheet in the file, the first object in the collection. I'm going to hit F8 again. Excel is going to go back through the loop because it's going to go through the loop once for each object in the collection. I can see we've got three sheets in the file. Hitting the F8 key again, sheet two. Okay, hitting the F8 key again, sheet three. So now what's going to happen, where is this highlighted line going to go if we hit F8 one more time here? We can see we're now out of the loop because we've been through each object in the collection. Hmm. How about that? Let's go ahead and prove it. And let's put another sheet in the file. So we've now got sheet four in the file. This time I'm just going to play the routine. I'm going to click back to the first sheet in the file, click into the routine. I can see the cursor there. Hit the play button. What's going to happen? We've got sheet one, first sheet in the file. Sheet four is now the second sheet in the file. Sheet two and then sheet three as well. So we haven't quite created a list. You'll have to go to our secret videos. They're only on the website. The link's in the video description. You can download the PDF for this series, and it's going to give you more information about how to create this list. So we've used the for each loop to work with worksheets in a file. What if we wanted to just work with a range of cells? Say I wanted to work with this range of cells here. I'm going to manipulate the existing macro and just see how I use the same structure, but change some of the elements. So the same structure for each object in a collection. So I'm going to change this uh, variable name here. Again, I could call this variable anything. I'm using an informative name, Chris Cell as range. And just a note on naming the variables, we can't use what Excel calls a, a reserved name. So if you say range as a variable name, Excel uses that word for its own use, so we can't do that. That's why I always put my name in there because it guarantees Excel isn't using that for another purpose. So then Chris Cell as range, then for each Chris Cell now, of course, in fact, I'm gonna hit Control F here I'm going to do a find and replace. So I want to, within the current procedure, current procedure, which is, which means the current macro, I want to change Chris sheet to replace with Chris cell here. So I can type in Chris cell in replace. And then I just want to replace all and then three replacements were made. So you can see the variable name has changed. That's really useful using find and replace. You can go to edit and find or control F as I did. And then we're going to say uh, for each Chris cell in selection now, and I'm going to say Chris cell dot address here. So the syntax has changed slightly, hasn't it? But the structure is the same. Remember for each biscuit in the biscuit team, we want to do something to each biscuit or battery indeed in the in the biscuit tent in this case we're not talking about biscuits or batteries we're talking about cells we just want to flush up the cell address for each chris cell in selection hitting the f8 key again and then what's going to happen we've got e3 flashing up so again a property a property the cell address is a property hitting f8 again e4 e5 using the f8 key to roll through here e7 and then we're out of the macro what other properties might you want you might want the value in the cell i'm going to say chris and luna i'm going to uh, select these cells rather than the address just get used to harnessing some different properties here you know a cell address is something you might want to use often you'd want to use the cell value. So we've got the concepts of objects being organized into collections, and then these objects having properties as well. Then this is the structure we need to know, a for each loop. So I'm going to hit the F F8 key again, and I can see now Chris is the property of the cell that we're harnessing, that we're displaying, and there it is, Luna's name is coming up too. So how about that? Just a small scale example. 
But if I had 100 cells, it would work in exactly the same way. That's the power of loops. That's why they're the most powerful concept in computer program and in Excel VBA. They're so easy to scale up. But in the Excel VBA beginner building block series, we're just doing these small scale examples. So make sure guys, you click the uh, link in the video description below, head over to the website. You're gonna be able to download the PDF there. And through the course of this summer, I'm gonna be uploading three secret Excel VBA meta skills videos there. The purpose of this video series is to build a foundation for you in Excel VBA and getting you doing some Excel VBA automation. Hope you enjoy the Excel VBA beginner building block series. I'll see you in the next one.